Hello, it's Sony Photographer, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the video editing experience on the MSI GS63 VR. I've had this laptop for almost two months, in January 2nd it will be two months, and I've managed to do a lot of stuff on this computer, a lot of different things. So some of them are, I've managed to DJ uh, at a wedding, did a bunch of photo editing, video editing obviously, uh, video gaming. I filled out the hard drive on this with um, video games already. Programming and just web browsing. I'm really happy with the way it performs. It has done great and all these different things. So far I haven't tried music production. Once I set up my studio, I'm gonna start doing music production more actively. As you can see, the place that I'm shooting a video is a little bit different. This is the den room in my apartment and this is gonna be my like office studio. Um, I painted the walls orange same color as my car and so far I have this couch over here and I'm just going to be shooting videos here. Here's how it looks from the other side. So if I talk about my experience with all the things I did on this computer in one video, the video is going to be too long and like this guy said, too much talking. Um, so I'm just going to be doing a little bit less of too much talking. And in this video, I'm going to be focusing on video editing. The reason why is because I'm a YouTuber and I do a lot of video editing. Although I haven't been doing that much recently and uh, I think I haven't released a video in a month. Wait, has it really been a month? Man, yeah, it's been a month. I'm sorry guys. Anyways, let me show you how is the video editing on the GS63 VR. I'm going to be talking about some of the specifications first. So I use Premiere Pro CC 2017. I've tried DaVinci Resolve, the free version, and the free version is really slow. Um, it doesn't utilize the CPU and the GPU just like the full versions. So it's just like give you an idea of how the software works. So other than that, you can't use that as a full-time video editing software. I had trouble with 4K files. I did the same project on Premiere Pro that I did on DaVinci and it was like much quicker. I could play everything at full resolution uh, with DaVinci Resolve. It made the CPU do all the rendering instead of the GPU and it was just the computer was just struggling and it was really laggy. So as far as specifications goes, I have a i7 quad core CPU, uh, has turbo boost up to 3.5 gigahertz and I have GTX 1060. I have 16 gigs of RAM at 2400 megahertz and I have 512 M.2 SSD. And lastly, I have a Thunderbolt 3 port. Uh, the reason why I mentioned the Thunderbolt 3 port is um, I use the Thunderbolt 3 port to connect my hard drive. This is just a regular USB 3 hard drive, but I bought a, just a USB-C cable. This cable is just more durable than my other one. Uh, my other one was just acting a little weird. Sometimes if I move the hard drive, it would disconnect. And that's super dangerous, so I could lose all my files. In addition to that, I recently bought this Kingston uh, SD card reader. This is a USB 3.0 SD card reader. So this computer does come with an SD card reader, but it's very slow. With a card that I can record 4K videos on, has minimum of 90 megabytes and reads and writes. The transfers on this port are at max 20 megabytes per second uh, when I'm copying files from the SD card to my computer. I think I got this two days ago and the transfer speeds were about four times faster than the stock SD card reader. So I would highly suggest in investing a good quality SD card reader. It will really improve your workflow because you don't have to wait as long to transfer your files. And if your SD card supports higher speeds, since this is a true USB 3.0 reader, you can support up to five gigabits per second. So you get what you pay for. So I start my editing workflow by transferring the files from the SD card to the SSD on the computer. I usually do my work on the SSD on the computer to get like the, the best read and write speeds of the SSD. And then um, once the copying is finished, I will create a new project in Premiere Pro. For this project, I'll edit the video I did on editing my course entertainment system. So updating um, Sync 3 in 2016 Mustang. And then I select where I will have my files. So let's go to videos, video projects, and then we'll create a folder calling updating sync three in 2016 Mustang. So then I select this folder. So this will be my kind of like a project folder. 
I actually don't change anything. I usually select the GPU acceleration because I have a really powerful GPU. So I have to switch to 1080p to be able to record this video because my camera overheated. I swapped the batteries, so hopefully I'll be able to shoot this video because I want to shoot this video, edit it, and get it out today. All right, so once I have the files ready, I will import them to my uh, project library here. Everything gets copied. And I have my CPU temperature and GP temperature up here. I'm also monitoring the temperatures here so you can see the min and max temperatures. So far, so one of the cores have gone up to 74 max. Um, but the current temperatures you can see it on the right here. So this computer, since it has an Intel HD graphics card and a NVIDIA, um, it selectively uses the GPU based on the software that you're using. So I have it in the NVIDIA control panel settings. I have it just use the, the GPU when I'm using Premiere Pro, so it doesn't even give a choice. But regularly, if you're using the computer, sometimes you might see the GPU temperature as being like not, not available, so it doesn't show anything. So it means the GPU is not even working. So this helps with your battery life. Once I have the videos, I will copy them into my timeline. So I'll grab this one. So like I said in this video, I'm talking about updating my my entertainment systems software version. There was a leak update in the Mustang forums. So I just grabbed it. This update gives Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So I was like really looking forward to it. So as you can see, I have the full resolution. I can just press play. There you go. From the Mustang 6G forums. So, so let's say I, let's zoom in. And I'll cut from here. Oh, it's funny. So we'll cut a few clips. Some kind of a layout where it would be like a realistic project. So I could have, let's say, we'll add here I'm talking. So here I stop talking. And the rest I could increase the, the speed of the playback. Because it's just updating. I can make it look like a time lapse. So let's go all the way the end because towards the end of this video I get close to my destination and the update finishes so I think around here yep so let's cut it from here and I'll increase the speed of this to let's say 600% oops so a quick trick if you're changing the speed and if you don't want to remove the, the clip that comes after it do a ripple edit shifting and then boom when you go back everything is all compact together when you increase the speed of a clip the audio is going to sound weird so you probably don't need the audio you could just include some music so you unlick the clips and just delete do a import so in my hard drive here videos i have video audio and i have a bunch of music that i could use let's just use this audio nice and short kind of fits into the to that time frame um, I also like to reduce the volume of the audio so let's do minus 10 dB and then you know to make this more CPU intensive I could also add like four copies of this and then, so as you can see, the, the CPU is getting hotter, the fans are kicking a little bit more. This is totally normal. And then, one more copy. Alright. So, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, a uh, much more efficient way. But, I'm just trying to stress test the, the CPU. And also, let's add a, a new item. Adjustment layer. So I use the adjustment layer to color grade my whole timeline. So I could just put it on top of everything and just make it the size of the whole timeline. Uh, so as you can see, it's a little bit dark. So let's go to color, basic correction, a lot. Um, let's adjust the white balance. So also the white balance will change depending on 
your clip because some part of the clip I'm outside. So we need to adjust for that too. So I can make different adjustment layers. So one for here and then copy this, put one over here and then I could copy this since this is actually no. Look at this continue this. Because the other, I have more clips there which I go indoors again. So anyway, so for the first part, we're indoor. Let's adjust it according to that. I think that's about it. I don't usually do too much. If I need to do any specific adjustments to the color reels or curves, I'll do them. But I feel like here it might be more useful. So as you can see, the, the, the fans start kicking in. You can definitely hear them. I don't know if the microphone is picking them up. But it's definitely, you can definitely hear it. So now, let's just play it with all those things. And Hello, it's Sony Photographer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to update the Sync 3. So we'll see how long it takes. As you um, can see, the, the fans are up to 75, 70 Celsius. So this is with four 4K videos, all going at the same time, with a basic color collection and a creative color. And it's also playing the video at 600%. So usually when I increase the speed of the clip, it doesn't look smooth while playing. Okay, so now everything seems to be good. Um, so now let's export this video. So this is a five, about, let's see, about five minutes long. Six minutes long, okay. So we can usually go to my preset and I go to YouTube 4K and this selects the setting I do render it max depth use maximum quality and it renders it at 40 megabits per second so we could actually put this at 50 to push the computer a little bit more and then audio settings is just leave it the way it is I'll change the destination of the file let's call it final now I can just press export so I'll usually use Adobe Media Encoder when I'm exporting, but if I don't have to do more work with the clip after I export it, because sometimes I will export it and then maybe work on a shorter trailer version, maybe for Twitter or Instagram. So if you want to do asynchronous processing, I would suggest using Media Encoder, um, but uh, just for synchronous ex exporting, you can just press export and it will just, you know, start rendering. So as you can see, the temperatures are shooting up to 87, 85 with the CPU usage at about like 80 plus most of the time. So this is with the auto fan mode. So this fan mode is automatically uh, modulates depending on how much load and temperature there is. So if you don't mind the sound um, of the fans, you could use the cooler booster mode and this will pretty much kick the fans at maximum and the fans are going to be cooler and but it's going to be a lot louder as long as you don't mind it you can select it so i'm going to select this so we'll kick both gpu and the cpu uh, fans pretty much to the maximum so there you go so the cpu is at already 5000 rpm so as you can see the temperature of the cpu stays at around 86 and 85 celsius with the fans at maximum rpm um, and then the GPU is around 70 Celsius, um, but the GPU usage is as not, it's not as high as the CPU. But the GPU fans are spinning much faster. This computer does have two GPU fans, that's why the GPU is cooler. Uh, it only has one CPU fan, but when I touch it by hand, like this area is not hot to the touch. Like the keyboard is a little warm on this area but the most of the heat is obviously at the bottom 
the computer pulls the air from the top, so it doesn't push the air the top. It pushes the air from the back. If you put your hand to the back of the computer, you can definitely find, feel the heat. Also, if you're wondering why I have the microphone here, I'll show you why. It's because if I put the microphone on the camera, since I'm using the 24 to 70 Zeiss lens, uh, I have to put the camera a little bit further to fit everything in the frame, but then the microphone becomes a little too far. So I'm gonna put the microphone about the same distance as where the camera is, but in another space. So you can hear the difference. So now the microphone is at the same distance as the camera. Um, now the microphone will probably pick up more noises around since I'm not close to the camera and you're not going to be able to hear me as good. I'll have either speak louder. By putting it closer to me, the sound is much clearer and plus you could probably hear the computer fans. Alright, so video processing finally finished so I'll just switch to fan mode to auto so it, you know, the, the sound dies down a little bit because it still has the the fans at maximum and it's keeping like the CPUs at like 52 Celsius. So now that we're done, I'll just close the project. Yes, I'd like to save it. So we'll go to our video projects and let's go to updating sync. And this is the final version and this is how it looks like. Hello, it's Sonic Photographer and today Another thing, I could have increased the speed to even more. So the video looks good, and the whole thing took me about 30 minutes probably uh, with the processing. And so definitely the editing process was very smooth. There was no hiccups. If you don't do like insane, crazy um, speed interpolations like, like I did, like 600%, or if you do more than 1000%, the playback is not gonna be smooth. But um, once it's rendered, everything looks great. As you can see, the MSI G60 VR just chews through 4K video and has no problem just editing and just rendering these videos. I've had a really good experience with it. Coming from a desktop gaming computer, uh, this laptop has not let me down. I don't miss going back to my desktop at all. I love this compact uh, form factor. I could, you know, edit videos on my lap. It does get a little bit hot, but, you know, the this cloth at the bottom kind of helps with the heat. As long as my feet are in the bottom part of the laptop, not at this part, I'm not gonna get any like, you know, third degree burn or anything. I'm very happy that computing has come so far that we, I can do stuff like this at such small form factor. I know that you can do like 4K editing, video editing on like thin laptops from like last year or two years ago, but this kind of experience with like no lag or anything it's really hard to come by especially at the price that i paid more than two years ago i paid around two thousand dollars for my macbook pro it didn't have a dedicated G gpu it was just integrated intel hd or it was like iris pro or iris gpu i could definitely do 4k editing but the computer was really struggling while i was doing it and coming from that to this computer it's just unbelievable. So I would like to thank you for watching and supporting me. 2016 has been a great year and the channel has seen a good amount of growth. I can't wait to see what 2017 has in store for this channel. I'm definitely looking forward to it. So happy holidays and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.